to MTBS TV. I'm Neil Schneider. In our last episode, we talked about the year 2008, what many consider to be the most controversial year in stereoscopic 3D gaming. What happened was a company called Zomin, which specializes in hardware cooling products, was looking to launch their own line of 3D monitors called the Trimon Zomin series. Now, uh, what happened to get these new 3D monitors to work, they needed updated software support. So sure enough, they reached out to NVIDIA, and through private arrangement, Zelman indeed got the software support that they needed. But there was a trade-off. Whereas before, uh, NVIDIA's stereoscopic 3D drivers supported all the different 3D solutions in the market, including shutter glasses and head-mounted displays, projectors, monitors, and so on, they were moving to a proprietary model. And NVIDIA's updated software support would only work with the Zalman 3D monitors. Well, the response to this, or the consumer response among stereoscopic 3D gamers and hardware vendors was very poor. Uh, obviously, they were very upset because whatever 3D solutions they had no longer worked. And in many ways, this was a major setback for NVIDIA in, in stereoscopic 3D gaming uh, among consumers and industry alike. Now, IZ3D and DVD did step in to diversify their support, but when it came to LCD shutter glasses, only NVIDIA had the means to interact with the graphics card, graphics card and the LCD shutter glasses uh, the way it was required. Now, let's backtrack to April 2008. Uh, a story was put out on CNET that NVIDIA was developing a new line of 3D glasses. And more than that, these glasses could be marketed through retail. Now, the second point of this story was that the software support of the drivers that would go with these glasses would not require any additional effort by game developers. That game developers would not have to do anything more to get their games to work in stereoscopic 3D. Well, nothing is further from the truth. The whole industry very much wants game developers involved, including NVIDIA. So I did reach out to NVIDIA to discuss this, and they were very nice about it, and a minor retraction was put out to MTBS, because sure enough, game developer uh, involvement is very much wanted. Now, but what's most important here was this was the first announcement that NVIDIA was developing something new. And in August of 2008, NVIDIA demonstrated the ViewSonic 120Hz LCD monitor at Envision. Now, why was this monitor so special? Well, up until now, LCD panels were actually hurting the industry, not helping the industry. Most of the LCD monitors, with the exception of IC3D, uh, could not do 3D at all because, because uh, LCD shutter glasses were the dominant solution and they would not work with LCD panels. The ViewSonic monitor supported 120 hertz, or 60 hertz per eye, which is exactly what the LCD uh, glasses require. So this was very hopeful news. And in January of 2009, NVIDIA released their GeForce 3D Vision glasses uh, bundled with the, the, with the ViewSonic 22-inch uh, 3D monitor. It also included the 1.0 version of the GeForce 3D Vision CD, which included their traditional uh, graphics card drivers, as well as NVIDIA's updated stereoscopic 3D drivers. And it was bundled together for 200 for the glasses, 400 for the monitors, 600 total. And Inve NVIDIA got their marketing right. I mean, the glasses themselves were very slick, very comfortable. It's a wireless solution, so no, no cumbersome wires between the glasses and the computer. It was possible, this is actually based on a, a, an infrared solution, so it was possible to have more than one gamer playing in stereoscopic 3D using one display, uh, provided, of course, they had their own pair of uh, NVIDIA GeForce 3D Vision glasses. And the lens quality was a bit better as well. NVIDIA put some effort in so that there's less color shift compared to uh, earlier LC, LCD uh, glasses on the market. But most important, their, their whole campaign was focused on being new, 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 and new. Uh, they tr they, they, the marketing behaved or acted out as though 3D never existed on the market before. And, and the fact is, it very much was niche market up until then. So, I mean, who was going to know? Um, but what's most important here is NVIDIA learned a very valuable lesson. Through LCD shutter glasses, or their own brand of LCD shutter glasses, they could diversify. NVIDIA was a pioneer again, because through their, their GeForce 3D Vision glasses, they could support 3D HDTVs, 3D notebook computers, 3D projectors, a very diverse market, all based on NVIDIA. But just remember, this is still proprietary. To get all these solutions to work, you were still obligated to buy NVIDIA GeForce 3D Vision glasses. Their pricing was, was criticized, but NVIDIA was thinking ahead. As we learned from CES 2010, 120 hertz display panels have become very dominant. They're inexpensive to produce, 
the 3D HDTV and display manufacturers could put out technology, whether or not people want the 3D, and the glasses could be added on when they're ready. And so from NVIDIA's point of view, it's not an investment of $600. It, the future is an investment of $200 for the glasses or the going rate. And uh, so it, it really was a win-win for NVIDIA. But there were some challenges that NVIDIA had to overcome. First, their, their updated stereoscopic 3D drivers were still very vulnerable to out-of-screen effects, which meant that if gamers wanted to have pop-out or out-of-screen coming out of the screen, it would create visual anomalies and problems with the video games. So, you know, uh, incompatibilities obviously would impact the consumer experience. So how did NVIDIA get around this problem? They hid the incompatibility. What happened was in their updated stereoscopic 3D drivers, they locked out the convergence controls, which means that the end user could not control whether or not they wanted an out-of-screen experience. Instead, NVIDIA treated this as an advanced feature, which the consumer would have to, you know, hunt through the menus to find and to activate. By doing this, NVIDIA was able to put out the message that GeForce 3D Vision supports over 300 plus games. And this is a very major marketing message to put out to the media and the press, and the solution worked. 3D Vision received kudos for ease of use, a positive 3D experience, and of course, you know, a claim for, for a wide range of video game support. But their positioning created some problems. First, the, the, what, what we call the 3D wow effect was, was temporary. It was cool at first, but after gamers enjoyed it for a while, it, it, you know, it would taper off. Um, this is because the gamer wasn't getting the full stereoscopic 3D experience. Furthermore, the media and the journalists weren't aware of the, these, this hidden functionality. Now the good news is NVIDIA has been actively working with different game developers to have the games better optimized so that they can indeed deliver this full stereoscopic 3D experience. But unfortunately this did create a product versus industry dynamic. NVIDIA, as I said, is still proprietary. They only support Zalman and their own shutter glasses. Game developers have very much been led to believe that only one solution exists in the market. So it's become an NVIDIA, an NVIDIA stereoscopic 3D gamer versus everyone else mentality. And I think, I think that's, that's somewhat unfortunate. But we have to remember that NVIDIA is a for-profit company. They've invested millions of dollars into this updated support. And obviously they want to and they need to make that money back. However, for media analysts, game developers, uh, you know, professional alliances like the S3D Gaming Alliance, we have an obligation to see the full picture, to recognize that indeed it is a very strong, very diverse market as CES 2010 demonstrated. Um, so we have to meet the needs of customers first and video game sales first and make sure that we're looking industry-wide. But that said, uh, there are additional products coming to market at CES 2010. BitCultron announced that they're going to be releasing their own line of LCD shutter glasses that work with AMD and IC3D and DVD and so on. So this is all very positive news. And we do know that game developers want industry-wide support. So, that said, NVIDIA GeForce 3D Vision, Rebirth of NVIDIA and Stereoscopic 3D Gaming. Next week, the history of stereoscopic 3D console gaming. See you then.